extended fasting. I embrace extended fasting in a way that I have not seen embraced by most people in the in the uh, social media space uh, and health space in particular, where I fast every single week for a minimum of three days. So I started about uh, two years ago now, fasting three days a week, and about once a month, I will fast four days a week. So literally uh, out of the month, uh, I am fasting about 13 uh, to maybe as many as 16 days out of the month where I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not eating. So sometimes literally more days out of the month, I'm not eating. Mm -hmm. But the important thing about that is you really want to make sure you recover your lost meal, your lost calories. I don't count calories, but make sure when you return to eating, you're not returning to what you were typically would be eating on a normal day. Um, you've got to get more protein in particular inside of you uh, to help you compensate sarcopenia. So the long and short is, um, I think autophagy is a really great way um, by which my restless leg syndrome improved and uh, in, in particular, my balance. It was incredible. Um, and uh, I did have extended past on my uh, on my notes. Um, uh, but uh, but now you mentioned it. I, I have to add as a type one diabetic, I do extended fasting as well. Now, of course, type ones are told not to fast. Oh no, you can't fast. Um, no, uh, you know, it's dangerous. Of course it is dangerous if you're not adjusting your insulin. But if you are able to adjust your insulin, um and monitor your blood sugars closely, which at least, you know, most people that I know do these days with a CGM, I have a CGM too. Um, so it can be done safely. I just get irritated when I hear, oh no, you're type one, you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> if I want to achieve autophagy, there's nothing stopping me. If I can do fasting safely, why can't I do it? No one's ever been able to give me a valid reason. Oh, it's not safe. Well, there is DKA, the danger of DKA, but that can be prevented. If you're taking your precautions, if you're adjusting your insulin to a safe zone where your body's not, there really has sufficient insulin on board, you're monitoring your blood sugars, your blood sugars are normal, you're not dehydrated, why cannot a type one diabetic to fasting. I don't understand. So, uh, that's so I'm so glad you mentioned that, 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 uh, um, uh, the fasting uh, for autophagy. Another benefit of fasting, if you don't mind me mentioning this, I'm sure you've noticed it in your clients and perhaps in yourself as well, is the um, uh, regaining of insulin sensitivity. <laughs> I do it when I notice that, okay, why am I now requiring more insulin? than perhaps the week before. And sometimes it's due, if you're a woman, it's due to your uh, monthly cycle. But if it's not that, then it's some type of food. For me, it's the cheese, unlimited dairy. If I'm overindulging in, in dairy or nuts or peanut butter, say, you know, or any nut butters, I notice I become insulin resistant. And the only way to regain my insulin sensitivity uh, pretty quickly and effectively is fasting, extended fasting. And it doesn't even have to be five days. I've done a five day fast, but it doesn't even have to be that long. One day, skip skip your meals for one day. And the next day you're like a, like a new person. So uh, blood sugars are back to normal. The gut has healed and uh, you know, your insulin uh, requirement reduces again. And you feel good. Have you, have you noticed that in term, terms of blood sugars? Yeah, so I uh, I haven't been following my uh, blood sugars uh, recently, but absolutely, uh, when I probably I stopped doing my CGMs about a year ago, um, I noticed increased insulin sensitivity uh, to um, uh, that that uh, resulted from extended fasting in particular. And um, the other thing that I did uh, way back in two thousand and nine, two thousand ten time period was uh, when I was going paleo, I had this infatuation with ins insulin sensitivity. And my infatuation of, of it went, I was just, I appreciated, I recognized that it was a really important I ideal uh, state. And so every article that referenced insulin sensitivity that I ever came across, I would read in any study. And so I quickly got insights into 
the kind of mechanisms and things you should be doing to increase insulin sensitivity. And I always applied them um, in my life. So um, I, I think I have unusual insulin sensitivity. And I'll share an interesting uh, recent experience. My uh, uh, family uh, w at, a, at a gathering, we recently got together, the, the extended family with the in-laws. And we were all the, the, the matriarchs, you know, the, grand, the grandmother, my, my wife's mother's home. Uh, and uh, her husband, my father-in-law, recently passed away. So it was the first time we were all really getting together after the funeral. And uh, uh, we, we were all just sitting around the living room talking. And something happened that I did that I almost never did, uh, did before. And that was I took a nap right in front of these people. And what happened was, um, I had to think about it, my wife was furious. She just thought I was bored. <laughs> I can't believe it. it. felt like I had been given a drug and, and that's, you know, anesthetized through the IV with a medication. And what happened was <clears throat> I was cleaning out some stuff from uh, that I'd previously left in my, my mother-in-law's home. And I came across a, uh, a jar of... Uh, of a fermented garlic that one of my clients had provided me with. And this fermented garlic was, was interesting to me. So I, I, uh, I uh, consumed, uh, um, uh, you know, a fair amount of these fermented garlic cloves. And uh, within uh, minutes of consuming this, uh, I had this incredible sleepy state that ca came across me and I suspect it had to do uh, I'd never felt there was there was you know probably some carbohydrates in this uh, in this in this garlic, and mm -hmm. I hadn't had carbohydrates in years. <laughs> so when that thing hit me, I think it produced an insulin, uh, a shot of insulin that my body had never seen uh, that kind of insulin uh, spike before, and uh, neither had my cells ever seen that that those that insulin effect, and and so I had this very dramatic response to these, uh, this fermented garlic clove. So uh, I'll have to research uh, fermented garlic to see what exactly happens to it when it ferments. As I looked at uh, since then, I realized that it's really not fermented as much as it's kind of baked. Mm -hmm. And I suspect it, it enhances the, uh, the sugars, kind of like caramelization maybe. And uh, in, in the in the uh, in the garlic cloves, but absolutely, I think insulin sensitivity is a uh, ideal ideal state that we should be uh, trying to achieve, and our, our ability to uh, to both produce and respond to the sensitive insulin really is a reflection of just how healthy we are. Mm -hmm.